Howdy everybody, my name is Sean Patton. I'm here at Selby Botanical Gardens to talk about our iNaturalist EcoFlora project, our August EcoQuest Living on the Edge. We're going to be focusing entirely on plants that live on the shorelines of lakes, ponds, and wetlands. This can include much of Florida's habitat. And here you can see a wide variety of wetland plants. Golden cannas, leather fern, golden rods, and primroses and bulrush farther closer to the water shore. There are several different specific habitats that these plants occupy. The most closest to shore and the one we'll be focusing on is riparian habitat. This is right at the water's edge, so when you're living on the edge, you're in a riparian habitat. And these plants include some of the most beautiful flowers in Florida. Canna lilies, scarlet hibiscus, crinum lilies, all enjoy the shallow, wet area that oftentimes only has the roots of the plant wet. One of the most beautiful wetland plants living in the riparian zone of ponds, or living on the edge, is the scarlet hibiscus. These hibiscus plants can get up to eight feet tall and have massive red flowers that attract large butterflies and pollinating insects. These are one of the most beautiful plants that you'll see growing on the shoreline. Many aquatic plants have very specific adaptations to help them deal with the extreme circumstances. Some of these, like floating water lilies, have the ability to float parts of the plant. This can often include the flowers and leaves, while the roots and stems are underwater. And here we can see a lovely little spatter dock coming up in order to breathe and photosynthesize at the top of the water. Other plants can grow entirely underwater or have terrestrial forms like this bacopa, which on land forms a small ground cover, but in the water is a branching submersed plant. When talking about aquatic plants, many of these have special adaptations that make identifying them on iNaturalist a little bit easier. As always, you want to take close pictures of the leaves, the stems, the trunk of the plant, which is especially important to a lot of these small herbaceous aquatic plants because sometimes they have swollen stems. If they're a floating plant, you want to take pictures of the roots, as some plants can only be identified by changes in root structure. And if there are any flowers, always take pictures of those. Many aquatic plants have cool or unusual features that we're going to want to identify. As you can see here, the stems are very swollen and have air pockets, which help the plant stand upright in the water. One of the oldest and most common aquatic ecosystems in Florida are cypress forests. These trees can actually live thousands of years old and form a unique freshwater ecosystem called the cypress forest or the cypress swamp. And these trees are signified by being mostly cypress trees. And these trees are easy to identify with small needle-like leaves, a thick peeling bark trunk, and most importantly, cypress knees or aerial roots that come out of the ground. And these allow the trees to get more oxygen to their roots and parts of the plant even when the water level is high or the soil is constantly inundated. The most common freshwater ecosystem most people in Sarasota and Manatee counties are going to be familiar with is actually going to be a man-made ecosystem. And these are going to be freshwater detention ponds. And so one thing that we want to see from the EcoFlora project is what is growing in your backyard pond? What is growing in the ditch behind your house? We want to see what species, whether they're native or invasive, are living in these ecosystems. Are they filled with native bulrushes and canna lilies and pickerel weeds or duck potatoes? Or do they have a lot of invasive water plants like water hyacinth, hydrilla, salvinia? What lives in your backyard ponds? Be extremely cautious whenever you're venturing into wetland areas. These areas are habitat for some of Florida's more dangerous creatures, such as water moccasins, American alligators, and crocodiles. You always want to take close, cautious, steps whenever you're in some place that you can't see and we always advise either traveling with a buddy or not going into areas where you can't see. Well that covers it for this month so we hope you're going to be out there exploring local parks like Mayaka and Redbug Slough to see what kind of cool aquatic plants you can find in this month's Ecoflora iNaturalist EcoQuest Living on the Edge.